Hello, and welcome to the Online Strength Coach Podcast, episode 62, Why No Belt? Hello and welcome to episode 62 of the Online Strength Coach Podcast. Today is the 14th of December 2015. Today's question again comes via Facebook. Question, hey Mark, just wanted to ask, on the lifting you do sometimes write unbelted, what is the difference between belted and unbelted? Does the belt act as an aid? I'm no lifter, just wanted to know. See you soon. Uh, thanks for the question. Um not entirely sure if you want or intended it as a... I'm pretty sure you didn't intend it as a podcast episode. However, I thought I'd use it as easy fodder for one anyway. Um, so, as I'll do, as I do with the Facebook uh, questions, I'll I'll leave you out anonymous. You'll know who you are when you hear it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. So it is actually quite surprising the amount of people who have been lifting weights for a long time are know of weights and don't really appreciate the use of a belt uh, if it actually helps what it does and when you should use it or why you should use it so I'll just do a this this, this episode I'll just do a bit of a primer something I've written a blog about in the past uh, it was a while ago uh, you can check out the Gas Strength, Strength website uh, I'll maybe even set a link to it uh, basically what the, the belt does um the belt increases the intra-abdominal pressure. So intra-abdominal pressure, as it sounds, is the pressure within your abdomen. So if you imagine you've got your spine, and then adjacent to your spine you have your intestines, lungs, diaphragm, rib cage. Basically you have what's inside your rib cage, and then you have the stuff below your rib cage. <laughs> your, your small intestines, your liver so on and so forth so if you imagine it's like a balloon except the balloon's full of stuff so it's like a water balloon and there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of air in the water balloon so you can actually increase the pressure by squeezing one end of it so what you do when you um, wear the belt is you're effectively squeezing the bottle of the bottom of the water balloon which is of course is your abdomen and what that does it, it it increases the pressure by um, compressing the space. So, if you imagine, if you could, if you got a water balloon with some space in it, and you press in on the bottom of that water balloon, all the liquid shifts to the top. That um, air is now compressed under your fist, and the pressure inside of the water balloon increases. And what happens to that is, it's no longer squidgy when you poke it, or it's less squidgy when you poke it. So if you hold the water balloon in your hand, uh, and it has that air space in it, and you press it in, it's quite squidgy, uh, it's very easy to deform, then all of a sudden if you squeeze one end of it, and you poke it, there's a lot more resistance there, it's a lot less difficult to squidge, or <laughs> squidge to, to press in. And that, that's essentially what the belt does, the belt remo- it compresses your abdomen, and that compression increases the pressure inside of your abdomen and that increase in pressure makes it a lot more solid and a lot a lot stronger so that that increase in pressure just acts as a ballast to your ballast is probably a bad example it acts as a support to your spine so normally when people miss lifts and very often when people miss lifts not always but very often for squats deadlifts less so on overhead presses maybe cleans and snatches to a lesser degree as well, is because when they lift the weight, they, they're not strong enough to remain in extension, so they'll start going into flexion. So when I say flexion, they're, they're, they start rounding their back. They start losing their natural curve, uh, and that causes, that, that, that bend in the spine starts to cause, in a squat, that can increase the size of the lever arm, so the bar comes out of, the, out of center line, that makes it increasingly more difficult to extend against the bar because that extra 
increase the lever arm, increases the force needed to overcome that weight. Uh, also, when you when you curve your spine, it can make the lockouts and deadlifts very very difficult. Um, it can also push the, um, if you're very practiced within your deadlift routine that rounding of the spine or that that abnormal rounding of the spine that can ha- happen with a heavy load can again cause the bar to come out of line. So basically what the belt does, it, it holds your technique, helps you hold your technique under greater loads. Or lets you lift the same load with better technique or a more upright back. Because that increase of intra-abdominal pressure makes holding a, a good back position or holding your spine in an extended position a lot easier. Now, so that's the, that's, that's how the belt helps. Um. What was it gonna go worth? Or well, how was I gonna develop this? So yeah, should does the belt help load wise? Now it depends on lifters and lifts. Um, I personally get about twenty kilos out of the belt when squat, and I get similar, maybe a bit less in deadlift. I probably get maybe ten to fifteen kilos in deadlift. There are some people who get five ten kilos. Depends on the type of belt, how you use it, what depth you squat to, what lifts you do. Quite a lot of lifters won't wear a belt for snatch because it's not heavy enough, but in clean and jerk they'll wear a belt because they, they feel they it helps. Like for example in a clean and jerk, um, during the clean phase if you're lifting particularly heavy, you're, you have to do it at maximal intention so you've got to rip it off the floor. For some people when they go heavy on deadlift, they can't hold a, their natural arch, or they can't hold a good posture. In a clean, that means that when they come in to pull the bar, it'll be further down their thigh than they probably would be normally with a good technique. It'll, it'll, that, and the bar being further down on the thigh, when they go to pull it, normally ends up in them looping it out, or not getting enough height because they're in a weaker position biomechanically when they pull against the bar. So. How the belt helps in different lifts is all centered around keeping your back in a good arched position, that strong extended position. How how around your spine makes lifts harder depends on the lift. Uh, some lifts like bench press can actually make it easier if you bend it the other way. <laughs> um, the, so yeah, so the belt does add weight to the lift. In short. And how much it adds is do- down to your technique, um, the lift, the belt. Um, so you get so typically there's there's two real categories of belt, and there's subcategories within these categories. So you have the powerlift belt, which is a uh, is the same width the whole way round. It's typically ten millimeters to thirteen millimeters thick. It's normally made of three ply material, sewed up, um, sewed together. Or glued together and sewed together. It normally it can operate with buckles, or you can use a lever or a ratchet. Uh, and this is typically used for powerlifting, so it's used for squat and uh, sometimes for bench and deadlift. And it tends to be the most supportive kind of belt you can use. These, this is the sort of belt that will add like 20 kilos on your lift. And then you get the weightlifting belt. Weightlifting belt's tapered around the front, so if you see a weightlifting belt that's thinner around the front where the buckles are and thicker around the back. This is designed for weightlifting, so when weightlifting in the squat, or in the front squat, or in the snatch and the clean and jerk, you go into an extremely deep squat, normally at end range of the hip and the knee. And if you go into end, end range of the hip and the knee with a 10, 13 millimeter power off the belt, that's the same size of the way around, it's going to dig into your thigh and it hurts like shit. Whereas with a tapered belt, it doesn't dig in because it's tapered. That's why, like, an, um, that's why weightlifting belts tapered around the front, basically, because they go to end range in their squatting patterns and it stops it digging in the thigh. It's practical, same as everything else. But that, that taper at the front means he typically can't really get as, get it as tight um, or it doesn't apply as much pressure uh, on the abdomen. And because it applies less pressure, that means you get less support. So, and then to kind of wrap this up, where, where do you use the belt and training or... Where is it best to use the belt in training? 
So the belt is training aid. It's not. It's not real. It's not a safety device as such. Uh, you don't wear the belt to mask bad technique. That's, that's when you shouldn't use the belt. Uh, if you're a beginner lifter and you feel deadlift a lot in your lower back, you feel squat a lot in your lower back because you have incorrect technique. The lower back is a conduit. It shouldn't be used as an extensor or shouldn't be used as a moving muscle. It simply should hold position and allow your legs and hips to do the lifting portion of the lift to actually apply the concentric force. As such, you shouldn't feel your lower back in deadlifts or squat unless you're going like particularly heavy, or you're going near failure, or you're busting, or you're just break. You push yourself to the point where you're breaking down, so you're maxing out in some manner, whether it's maxing out for reps or it's maxing out for load. So that's where the belt shouldn't be used. Where the belt should be used is as a as a powerlifter. Uh, if you're training, if you're going into competition. Then you should use the belt because you can lift more. It'd be stupid not to use it. As a weightlifter in competition, if you find the belt helps you lift more and the snatch the clean and jerk, then you should definitely use it. So any kind of comp- any kind of strength competition where it helps, you, should, you absolutely should use it. In training, um, to have a higher squat, higher deadlift, you should use the belt in peaking cycles. So if you're coming into a competition and you're getting into competition shape, you should definitely use the belt in training. If you're kind of far, you're far away from the competition, say eight to twelve weeks plus, then you shouldn't use the belt, in my opinion, because it not using the belt reinforces good technique. Um, the belt can, the belt can hold you in positions quite a lot of the time, and as such, it's a lot easier. Um, you'll probably find when you put a belt on, you don't really need to think about it, like holding a nice arch to the back, um, starting with a good uh, back position and deadlift. When you're lifting heavier loads without a belt, you become a lot more acutely aware of what your trunk's doing. And that leads, typically, as long as you're actively looking to feedback and actively looking to use a better technique, that increases the amount of... Uh, generally, it increases the amount of time, the times you fuck up when you don't wear a belt. Or you see where you're fucking up when you're not wearing a belt. And by looking at that fucking up process and correcting the fucking up process... You become a better lifter. Fight that, that fight that process. Uh, whereas the belt kind of masks a lot of poor technique. So if you're training far away from competition, wouldn't use it. Uh, as an athlete, it depends on your goal. So if you're training for leg strength and purely leg strength, and you want to use barbell squat, or you want to use deadlift, then you should use the belt when you get into heavy loads or heavy phases of training. So for example, if you follow the four week cycle. And week three is the heaviest, and I use this because typical uh, cyclical pattern that we'll use at work. Um, then you probably want to use it maybe week two, week three. Week two is the kind of ha- the higher volume phase, and week three is like the higher load phase. So those two weeks you might want to look at using the belt. Um, and then on your deload week or on your, your first build up week, you might want to get away from the belt. If you use the belt a lot, sorry, I just hit the desk. If you use the belt a lot, then you should definitely look at times where you should use what, where you should use it and why you should use it. I definitely don't think it's something you should use all the time in your training. Uh, but then it, it depends on your goals. If you're the sort of guy that competes all the time, like you've got seven competitions, eight competitions next year, then you probably want to train with the belt pretty much for the majority of the time, unless you're going to complete compete out of the belt because it's specific to what you're training for. So I hope that's addressed your questions. Um, probably a bit more basic than we're used to on this podcast, but I hope I've done a decent job of uh, describing it, putting it across. Uh, any questions, comments, please leave them below. Any email inquiries you got for online coaching or any questions you want answered but don't want to put it on YouTube comments, you can catch me on Facebook, Cast Iron Strength, um, my own Facebook's Nally Gaines, uh, or you can email me at speedpowerperformance.gmail.com. Check out Cast Iron Strength, the, the blog, my own personal blog that I keep. And then if you want to mosey on to onlinestrengthcoach.com, I'm going to start putting up the the blog on iTunes, and that process will begin this week. I will probably give you a Christmas present and release maybe 1 through 10 by Christmas. Or I could do the 12 podcast at Christmas, which would be pretty sad, but I could do it. Um, which means I should have started yesterday. <laughs> this is the 14th. Uh, yeah, so that's maybe an idea I should have come up with yesterday. But I was... Uh, Hung over on a train, so that wasn't happening. Okay, hope you enjoyed the episode. 
and I'll be back with you again this week, um, guaranteed. Hopefully, I try to get a bang out three this week since I've got more my evenings, like I mentioned beforehand. Try and release two or three articles in the next few weeks as well. So watch out for those. Uh, until next time, this is Mark. Signing out. Enjoy your next couple of days. I'll catch you Wednesday, probably. When the sins of my father Lay down in my soul And the pain of my mother Make it rain, make it rain down, Lord, make it rain.